Hey y'all, Coach in a Fight here, talking about Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. And in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to determine when the new year will start. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. Now, we're looking over here in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 14, which is our biblical reference for how the sacred calendar works. And in these verses, what we find out is that our father created the sun, the moon and the stars as the lights of the firmament. And their job is to divide the days from the night, which is the sun's responsibility in the celestial calendar, which also includes the stars which gives us the signs like we saw back in 2017 with the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. And we have the moon, which gives us the appointed times or the Mohadim, the festival days. The moon also gives us the days of the months. And then the combination of the sun, moon and the stars is how we calculate the years. But if we really want to know how this all works, if we want to look at the text that instructs us how to use the sun, the moon and the stars as our calendar, we have to refer to the book of Enoch. This is the scriptural authority on the calendar. In other words, this is the only place in all of scripture that you're going to find out how the sacred calendar works. So let's take a look and let's see what it says. All right. So first of all, let's look at the son's responsibility in all of this. Like we learned in the book of Genesis, its job is to separate the days from the night. And we see here in chapter 72, verse two of the book of first Enoch, it says, this is the law of the luminaries. The sun and the light arrive at the gates of heaven, which are on the east and on the west of it at the western gates. So in other words, what is saying is that the first law of the luminaries is that the sun arrives at the western gates. And what is the sun doing at the western gates? It's actually setting. In other words, the day starts at sunset. Now, I realize that a lot of people are scandalized by the fact that our day ends and begins at sunset because we're used to the secular calendar. 12 a.m. is when they get a whole nother day while the majority of us is sleeping. However, that's not how our sacred calendar works. Our father set it up so that the day changes over at sunset when the majority of the people on the planet are awake. I say this often, unless you're sick, or work the night shift, chances are you are awake at sunset along with the rest of the people on the planet who were still asleep at sunrise and was definitely asleep at midnight. But anyway, we'll come back into this because it's going to play a role in the new year. The next thing we want to talk about is the star's responsibility in all it is when Enoch is down here talking about these gates. As it turns out, the year is actually broken up into four different seasons, which consist of three 30 day periods apiece. And notice I didn't say month. These are periods which start with the equinoxes and the solstices. In other words, the spring equinox, like it says down here in first Enoch, that first window begins when the days start to become longer than the nights. This of course is after the spring equinox. Before the spring equinox, the days are shorter than the nights, but it is at the head of the year that our days start to become longer. And that's how we know when the first window opens. So now all we need is the representation of the moon in order to know when the first day of the year would be. You see right here in this verse is talking about how when we have the convergence of the sun, the moon and the stars, we have the beginning of the year. In other words, this is when our year starts, the sacred year, when the sun, the moon, 
and the stars, which are represented by the gates, all align up. So when is that time? Now, chances are the next new moon will be sighted on March the 22nd in the year 2023. Now, of course, we can't be absolutely sure until after sunset on the 22nd, which is when we should see the verification of the new moon. And that's part of how all of this works is we have Levi's and priests around the world who will be going out there on the 22nd in order to verify that the new moon has appeared. And then we see down here in the book of Enoch chapter 73, once we have the appearance of the new moon, that's when we have the beginning of the months. So just like Genesis chapter one and verse 16 says, we have the sun, the moon and the stars to be our sacred calendar. So when does the year start? When is the first day of the year? It will begin at sunset once the new moon appears. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to recognize how the scripture says that the day works. It changes at sunset while the rest of us, once we see that new moon on the 22nd, will start our new months and New Year's celebration that will end on the evening of the 23rd. Those who insist on the day starting at sunrise or at midnight would have missed all of those festivities and actually could find themselves in violation of the law. That's why we do so many classes trying to help you guys out, trying to make sure you get this understanding, because there are just as many out there trying to make sure that you miss these holidays and these festivals and makes it so that you are dependent on the world for your food, clothing and shelter. Well, that's why there's so many agents out here trying to confuse you on the sacred calendar, trying to tell you that the month starts with full moons and that the day starts at sunrise and that the year starts with barley harvests and all kinds of stuff that doesn't align with scripture. But anyway, we won't worry too much about those guys. The only people that are going to matter at the end of the day are those who are actually keeping Passover correctly. For a biblical reference for that, we can look at Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9, which is talking about the 144,000 and the great multitude that no man can number. Those people who will survive the tribulation or the apocalypse. Well, one of the reasons why they will survive is because they have palm branches in their hands and because they are clothed in white robes. Of course, we get our palm branches in the Feast of Tabernacles, but our robes are made white during the Feast of Passover. Well, in the year 2023, upon the verification of the new moon on March the 22nd, the Passover celebration should commence on April the 4th, right after sunset. And this is important. We'll talk about this more once we actually see the new moon. But it's important to remember that the special time of Passover is the evening that it starts. Again, we refer to the day starting at sunset. Well, on sunset, the beginning of the 14th day of the month will occur on the evening of April the 4th. And that's when we will start our Passover celebration. If we wait to the next day, April the 5th, we will have missed the important parts of Passover. You remember the story of the Messiah. They put him on trial and they put him on the cross during the daylight hours of the 14th day of the month. But it was the evening before that the important stuff went on, which was what we refer to as the Last Supper and that communion, which is how our father washes our garments, how we are made clean. So it's important to get that time right. But we'll talk more about that after we get the verification of the new moon to make sure that we have the dates right. But if it stands, we'll have the Feast of Unleavened Bread that will start on April the 6th and will go all the way through to April the 12th. And then, of course, the Feast of First Fruits starts on April the 14th. 
So when is Rosh Hashanah? When is the head of the year? When is our celebrations? When do we start busting off our foul crackers and having our celebration and stuff? Well, it will be when the sun, the moon, and the stars all line up. So we'll start blowing our trumpets on the evening of March the 22nd. If our celebrations included fireworks and all of those, well, it's right there at sunset that we'll start making all of our noise to bring in our new year, the sacred new year. And for the year 2023, it will actually be the sabbatical year. And that reminds me, make sure you guys are subscribed. We're working on some classes dealing with the sabbatical year, which starts with the new year in 2023. Some really important stuff. So make sure that you're tuned in. Looking back through the scriptural events related to the temple and our Messiah proves that the sabbatical year is extremely important when it comes to our father's sacred plan. So again, make sure you subscribe. Go ahead and hit that like button and leave us a comment if you will. It really helps the channel. Continue to pray for us and Shalom.